uh, welcome to this session uh, friends so today in this session we will uh, study this uh, lectures on chemical bonding so what is actually a chemical bond so it is an attractive force uh, which holding together two atoms so it can be uh, the force can be uh, between two atoms or it can be group of atoms which forming an aggregate of ions like a sulfate carbonate or it can be molecular species like h2 cl2 and that occurs uh, that there occurs a lowering of energy so by lowering of energy this uh, group of atoms uh, or uh, two atoms they hold together due to a attractive force the attractive force is actually called a chemical bond now it uh, raises many questions such as uh, why atoms required to combine itself first question and second how these atoms are combining together first thing why it is combining and how they are combining what is the nature of force which is existing between these two combining atoms like h2 or you can say sulfate uh, h2so4 like what type of nature are uh, present this uh, atoms or we can say how can the properties of compound be understood in terms of chemical bonds how we can understand so if you go history in uh, early days like uh, 1815 so ability of the various elements to combine with one another was expressed in terms of their valences previously we are taking in terms of their valences means they know the concept of valency means each element was said to have a valency equal to its combining capacity nothing but the combining capacity of the element is called its valency for example when oxygen react with hydrogen it forms water so in this case valency of oxygen is 2 and for hydrogen is 1 for example another example if you take magnesium uh, you react with the cl to give mgcl2 so valency of magnesium is 2 and valency of magnesium cl means by using this concept valencies Uh, so the atoms are combining so by using this it was found that elements may have multiple valencies so this is one mo uh, major problem occurs during the uh, giving this concept and fraction valencies in some certain compounds means one compound having the different type of valencies now this was another problem let's take one example like nitrogen it forms a number of compound with the hydrogen gas for example ammonia so valency of ammonia in this case it will be 3 If you take N two H four, the valency of hydrogen will be two, and if you take the N three H hydrogen acid, so it becomes the valency of nitrogen one by three. So we are getting one, one by three fraction valency. So why the same atoms having different type of valency? This means the concept of valency was totally confusing. It is unacceptable. Then what we'll do? Later on, definition of valency was changed. So valency was not a constant for the chemical bonding; it was changed. Now modern concept of valency deals with the interaction between the atoms in the light of structure of atoms. Now uh, it was modified with uh, taking the consideration of a structure of atoms. That is, uh, now we are taking electronic configuration of atoms, and this uh, concept was taken by Mr. W. Cassell and Jevon Lewis in 1916, and they were the first. Which provide the logical explanation of valence. Valence expression was correct, but they give with proper explanations, not direct explanation from the formula. So it is actually based on the inertness of the novel gases. So this uh, valence concept was based on the inertness of the novel gases, which was later come to be known as the octet rule. So let us see this concept properly. Causes of uh, chemical combination. first is lowering or decrease in the potential energy of the combining atoms when two atoms come close to each other when two atoms close to each other then the force of attraction and repulsion operate between them so between them this force of attraction it may be by the both forces are attracting operating between them uh, between these two atoms and the distance at which the attractive forces overcome the repulsive forces is called bond distance so this is the distance when this attractive forces and repulsive forces both are overcome means they are equal to each other then this is called as the bond distance 
and here the potential energy of the system is lowest and at that time this distance becomes your bond distance or bond is formed. Let us see this, this example. This example, this is the one atom having positive charge, this atom and a positive charge. So when these atoms come together, so they are uh, they're experiencing two types of forces. One is the attractive forces, this due to this positive and negative charges. And this is the repulsive, uh, repulsive forces due to, uh, due to the two positive charges. And this is again attractive forces between the nucleus and the electron. If net attractive forces get in the repulsive forces, then what happens? These atoms come together and form a distance. This distance is called as the bond distance. I have drawn this one diagram, so th th this, uh, through this diagram you can easily understand. So this is the two atoms A and B, it can be same or different. So in this case no overlapping, no attraction there. So when these come together, this is the bond distance, this is the energies. So when they are coming, so this distance you can see, this distance is decreasing. So it is going to down. So at this distance, this distance can be infinite. So when they are coming, this is the distance. So some overlappings occur, means more attraction is over there. More attraction means that uh, repulsive forces are less than the attractive forces. So there is more attractive forces. And energy also going down. You can see energy going. So when it reaches to this Y point, so there will be the more attraction and less repulsion. So at this distance, the distance between these two atoms is nothing but the bond distance. You can see this is the bond length is there. It's the bond length then, actually of this one this is and uh, this much is the energy present in this plane, this molecule and when you try to bring uh, these two atoms more closer then again potential energy will steadily increase and they will separate each other so at this point what happens this is uh, nothing but the minimum energy possessed by this molecule and this distance is the bond length uh, between these two atoms so there are the some conclusions which we get uh, point Y, attractive and repulsive forces are in equilibrium. Uh, second point, overlapping between the two atoms is maximum. And third is the energy is minimum. Uh, minimum, So uh, this molecule becomes uh, stable. So we can see this is the distance between atoms versus potential energy diagram. This explains the uh, chemical bonding present in the atom or molecule. Lewis octet rule. This is the second concept after the uh, lowering of potential energy based on the electronic theory of valencies. That is the modern concept of electronic configuration or modern concept of valencies. So this uh, Lewis concept, it was based on the electronic configuration of the novel gases. Okay, like uh, novel gases we have neon, argon and they have 8 electrons in their valence cell. Means if the Electronic configuration novel gases means if they have the eight electrons in valence cells, they do not participate in chemical reaction. Okay, if it is uh, different from the less than eight electrons, then it will participate in the chemical reaction and they will form the bond. So this was the second criteria. Means tendency to uh, achieve eight electrons in the outermost energy cell is the concept of octet rule. Other elements are chemical reacted because they have less than eight electrons in their valence cell. For example, sodium, if you see the electronic configuration, 3s1. For magnesium, 3s2, so it is less than 8. Carbon, 2p2, nitrogen, 2p3, so the, all these elements are chemically reactive. But helium, hydrogen, these are helium is exception. It has 1s2, 1s2 it will be inert, and for hydrogen, 1s1, it is a chemical reactant. So they are following the dual rule. Maximum 2 electrons present in the energy cell then these are stable, otherwise it is reactive. So hydrogen is reactive because it has one electron in cell. Others are reactive because they have less than eight electrons. So if electronic configuration is S2, P7, P6, this whole, in the outermost energy cell, it will uh, constitute a structure of maximum stability and they have the minimum energy. So this is the another criteria for the instability of the molecule. Now we'll see the Lewis Lewis dot symbols of elements. Means how we can draw the Lewis dot symbols. So just write down the symbols and surround it by the number of dots or crosses equal to the number of the valence electrons. This is the main significance of the dot symbols. By drawing dot symbols, we can write the valency of the electrons by using the valency of the electrons only. So this is the 1, 2, this has group number of the element 1, 2, 18. And Lewis symbols of X elements, so if it is 1 means uh, valence electrons will be 1. If it is 2, valence electrons will be 2 by dot. This do two dot symbols. 
if the group 13 means uh, 10 minus 3 uh, so it will be your 10 uh, 13 minus 10 so it will be your 3 valence electron and which is 14 so uh, 14 minus 4 so you have 4 valence electron 15 means 5 valence electron 16 means 6 so 10 is the stable configuration 10 is the again 7 so this is 7 electron 8 electrons 8 is the valence electron so this is group of lithium valence electron is 1 for beryllium 2 for uh, boron is 3, 4 carbon is 4, carbon group 14, 4 nitrogen 5, so these are the valence electrons, 6 electrons, 7 electrons, 8 electrons. So valency will be your, uh, if it is 8 minus number of dots, if it is more than 4, so we will write the number of dots, that is the uh, equal to 4 or less than 4. For example, nitrogen, less than 4 will be number of dots, if, uh, if it is more than 4, then we can write 5, like nitrogen. Nitrogen have a 5 electrons. So 8 minus 5, so valency will be 3. We are discussing here. 5 is the valency. Uh, 5 is the number of uh, valence electron, but valency will be 3. In this case, valency will be 2. In this case, valency will be 1. In this case, valency will be 0. So these uh, are the inert gases which, which valency is 0, but in this case, valency will be uh, 8 minus 7 because uh, 8 is 8 minus 1, 8 minus 6, it will be 2. Uh, 4 is 8 minus 5, 3, it will be 8 minus 4, 2, but it will be directly 1, 2, and 3. Oxygen is 2 and fluorine is 8 minus 7, 1. So, valency are counted like this. Now, we will see what is electronic theory valency. What is octatool or we can say it, what is causal Lewis approach to chemical bonding. So, these two uh, persons who suggested that electrons themselves are responsible for the chemical combination. These electrons are actually responsible for the chemical combination. And he formulated his in statement independently in 1916, and which was completed by Langmuir and called as the electronic theory valence. So how this uh, bonding takes place? Let us see uh, through this electronic theory of. So main points are as uh, follows. So valency of an atom, uh, atom it depends upon the number of electrons present in the outermost orbit, which is nothing but the uh, valence electrons. Second point, electronic configuration of the novel gases is stable. Electronic configuration for novel gases is stable. So, 8 electrons in valence cells except hydrogen and helium because they possess the dual cells. Hydrogen have 1 electron and helium is the 2 electrons. So, this is stable hydrogen reactive. So, these are chemical reactives and they do not form any compound. These novel gases I am talking. If it is 8 electrons and if helium is 2 electrons, then they, they are inert and they do not form any compound. If it is less than let us see next point. If atoms having the less than 8 electrons in the outermost orbits, so their chemical reactions means their tendency of these atoms is to achieve 8 electrons in the outermost orbit. So number of electrons take parts is determines the valency of the atoms. For example, nitrogen have 5 electrons valence cell. They have the 5 electrons in the valence cell. So their valency will be 3. So valency, similarly oxygen having the 6 electrons, so their valency will be 2. Second, uh, second by next point, so there are two ways by which the atoms can acquire the novel gas configuration. Or we can say 8 electrons in the outermost energy cells. So these are numbered by losing or gaining electrons, by losing or accepting electrons, which is nothing, it is called as the ionic bond. Or second point is why sharing electrons, means by formation of covalent bond. Means if they will lose or accept electrons, it will be ionic bond. If they will share electrons, it will form a covalent bond. Now again, sharing is two types. Sharing is two types. So one is called as the equal contribution electrons. One share may be possible. The contribution of electrons will be equal. And these electrons are then shared equally. So these are called as covalent bond. A second uh, type is uh, contribution of an electron pair. Means two electrons is shared by one atom. And both the electrons are, and then this one is sharing, but uh, sharing actually done by the two atoms. I am explaining once again. In this case, equal sharing of electron take place. But in this case, uh, one atom is contributing an electron pair. Means it is giving two electrons to other atoms. But this is a kind of sharing. This is a kind of sharing. This is not a losing or gaining electrons. Let us see this example. This type of sharing is called as the coordinate bond. So in this case, suppose uh, chlorine having the 7 electrons in its valence cell and this chlorine having the 7 electrons. So to uh, make a 8, this chlorine requires 1 electron, this chlorine requires 1 electron. So 1 electron is shared between the 2 atoms. 
So we can make one circle and we can make one circle. So now this contains eight electrons, this contains eight electrons, and one electron is common. So this is a one bond. So this is a pure covalent bond. Now in this case, uh, we can say hydrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. So this hydrogen and oxygen is bonded with the hydrogen, this oxygen bonded with the so two electron is used. So this two electron is called as the lone pair of electrons. So one lone pair, one lone pair. Now this is the proton. This is the proton. So this proton having no electron. So this will take, uh, this oxygen will give one electron to this proton. This oxygen will give one electron pair to proton. So we can, we can see this is your lone pair and this is giving electron to this proton. So this uh, tail point is your, and this is a head point. So head point is towards this hydrogen. So oxygen giving a lone pair to this hydrogen. So we can draw a diagram like this. So this is the coordinate bond and these two are your covalent bond and it consists of one lone pair. So this is the one lone pair and we can say two covalent bond, two covalent bond and one coordinate bond. So in this way we can write one coordinate bond. So water, this is H3O plus, this H3O molecule plus contains two covalent bond and one coordinate bond. We'll study more in details. Just uh, for the answering of these two uh, statements, I have drawn these two diagram. So we will study uh, with more examples in further coming lectures. So now uh, classification of the chemical bond. So there are two types of classification. One is the strong bond, second is the weak bond. So under the strong bond, there are four types, ionic bond, covalent bond, coordinate bond and metallic bond. So under metallic bonds, again we have three types of packing arrangement. So CCP, SCP and BCP, cubic close packing, hexagonal close packing and this is the body close packing. So this is a different type of copper packing only possible in metallic bonds. And uh, weak bonds, so this is again two types, one is the hydrogen bond, second is the van der Waal uh, force of attractions or interactions, van der Waal interactions. So this is not WA double this is the WAL, the van der Waals. So hydrogen bond, so hydrogen bond is actually existing between uh, hydrogen and nitrogen, hydrogen and oxygen like hydrogen and nitrogen, hydrogen and oxygen, hydrogen and fluorine. Mainly these uh, three atoms constitute the hydrogen bond. And in case of van der Waal force of attraction, so there are different type of uh, forces. One is the dipole, dipole interactions, so and dipole uh, interactions or dipole induced dipole interactions. Instantaneous dipole uh, forces induce dipole interaction. There are different type of interactions that we will study in detail in the coming of lectures.